Hey everybody, this is the Slightest Review, and I'm here today to talk to you about a forgotten Marvel cartoon that many people have really forgotten about. And that cartoon is The Silver Surfer. I loved this cartoon when it came out in the late 90s. This show has always been described as William Shakespeare in space. Like, it's that poetic and everything, the way they talk. It, this show had an, an, an otherworldly feel to it. It felt like you were watching like a Greek play play out, but with like with, with William Shakespearean type stuff in it. You know what I'm saying? Like you just got that feels to it. The way they talk, the way they acted, the way the music was. It just it, this show was different. Now, this has no connection to the Fantastic Four cartoon series. And actually, the Fantastic Four don't even show up at all in this series. So they had to like work around that and create their own stuff. And they managed to do that in a very good way. It lasted only for one season, 13 episodes. And I know what you're saying. If it was that good and so many people loved it, why did it get canceled? Well, they did come up with a second season concept art and storylines. But it got canceled because of one reason, one reason only. Marvel went bankrupt. And as a result, they couldn't come out with a second season. Now, one thing interesting about this series is that this was when they were going bankrupt. They had to utilize past um, cast members that they used before in the X-Men series. So you'll be hearing all kinds of voices from Cyclops to... Um, Professor X and everything in this series. The animation was very superb. The animation looked like if something came out straight out of a comic book and it had that old X-Men anime series type look to it. Also, they was using computer generated imagery at that time. So a lot of the space stuff, like the ships and stuff, was made out of computers. So it had a weird feel to it, but that what made it look so alien and stuff. I enjoyed this series so much. It caused me to be a huge fan of Silver Surfer. And it's just like, so it starts off, of course, with the man himself, Norman Rad. And he's living on Zen Law with his um, girlfriend, wife, Shalaba, and all his people. And of course, here comes Galactus wanting to feed on his planet. And just like in the comic books, he makes a deal with Galactus. He will help him search out for new worlds if he'll just leave his home planet alone. And so he does that. And thus... Norman becomes the Silver Surfer and it, it goes into like a quick montage type thing of him going out to other planets fighting the aliens and Galactus coming in and destroy the world there are so many alien refugees it's not even funny in this series but then it, it quickly goes back into like a, um, a modern day um geez I forgot it's been a while since I saw this because I said the Fantastic Four are gone I believe they still sent the surfer to Earth. It is there he meets like Frankie, and we all know who Frankie is. She becomes the new Herald and Nova, but not yet. Now she's a mutant in this, and she has the ability to, to just to go places and find whatever she's looking for. So anyway, he goes down to Earth, and something causes him to like not want to help Galactus out anymore. I forget what and who, but like I said before, Fantastic Four. Alicia Autumn are not in this so it's something else and so he tells Galactus he can't do this no more he can't destroy he's still brainwashed by the way he doesn't know he's Norman Rad and I think god what is it something happens I think before that I think he meets Ego the living planet and when he meets Ego he starts to realize that he used to be human he used to be a man or something like that so anyways he's on earth and yeah he tells galactus he's not doing this no more him and galactus they fight and then galactus is all like hey whatever i will spare earth but this will come with a dire consequence he will free the surfer of his bond so he no longer has to seek out planets but he's gonna take um zen law and send it so far out into the galaxy that the surfer will never be able to find that is his punishment so the entire series we see the surfer going out throughout space looking for his home planet and his loved ones then of course he turns freaking into nova because somehow she ended up on his ship because she has that ability to transport to wherever she wants to be at 
and he uses that ability to turn her into Nova. So the entire story arc just sees the surfer like just traveling the universe, the galaxy, trying to find Shalaba, trying to find Zen Law. And he's met with so many obstacles to where we get to see so many recurring characters from the comic books. And it's just so great. He meets and befriends Pip the Troll. And, you know, and um, Pip, he, you know, he learns how to be a more of a courageous person because of the surfer. And he travels with him for a while. We end up meeting the android Drax the Destroyer. Not the organic one, but the android one. The old school one and stuff. And he's with this one dude while they're all being watched by the Watcher. The Watcher knows something is coming. And he's, you know, like he does, he's watching over the galaxy and stuff. And But the Watcher has a little bit of a deep, um, uh, uh, dark secret. They end up going on this one planet where everybody's turning into this strange, gooey, ooey stuff. And even a surfer does. And it's like, because something the Watcher did a long time ago that caused this planet to do this. And so they have to do what they can to stop and, um, and, and heal this like planet and uh, fix the mistake that the Watcher made many years ago. We get to meet Adam. Like, this is just amazing. He hasn't even shown up in the MCU fully yet. And this Adam, he is a warrior who's stuck in time loop who's keep fighting the same battle over and over and over. And then when the surfer meets him, he gets trapped in that time loop as well. And it's just like, the surfer has to try his best to convince Adam that this battle has been won many, many, many years ago and that his fight is over and stuff. And so they have to find a way to get out of that. It's kind of like this little vortex time loop thing. They do end up getting out of that, but I believe Adam ends up going back because he just can't help himself. He has to keep fighting that same battle in his mind that he thinks is not over with yet. There's this really cool Beta Ray Bill episode where we get to see the surfer goes on the planet on which Beta lives on. And there's kind of like this machine that makes people believe whoever they want to be. So people are believing that they're supermodels, warriors, all this other stuff. Beta believing he is a warrior. And he has his classic uniform on and looking like Thor with the hammer, Stormbreaker, and stuff like that. I forget what really happens in this episode. All I know is that the surfer starts to believe he's in this reality too. And something happened. I think the planet is either dying or... Um, yeah, when he finds out that this is all an illusion, he sees that these people are very poor looking, very skinny. So he's trying to help them get out of that illusion so they can help better themselves and actually eat <laughs> and stuff. I had that when somebody's coming down to destroy that planet. It's one of those two. But yeah, and it's kind of like so he destroys the machine and this makes everybody go nuts in the head because they've been living in like this VR simulation for many, many years. And it's really devastating for them to go back into the real world and stuff. And of course, because there are so many alien refugees, they take this out on the surfer. They can't go to Galactus and take it out on him because he's too large and powerful. But they take it out on the surfer to where they hunt him down and they put him on trial and they separate him from his board to the part where he is dying. And these aliens, a lot, it's a mixture of a lot of aliens. It's the scroll, it's the Kree, it's this bug light race. It's a lot of people. Um, I think it's called the brood or something like that. And it's just like, you know, it's a lot of people really wanting revenge on the surfer. Cause he helped destroy these civilizations. He helped destroy, uh, he went head to head with their armies and stuff and their defense system. And then let Galactus destroy their planet. And now they're just refugees and stuff. And he sees the error of his ways, but he could not help himself because he didn't know who he was at that time. He didn't know he was Norman Rad and stuff. And it's just like, this dude is constantly, constantly, constantly fighting a internal battle with himself and a physical battle with everyone else. You know, it's just like being a surfer was more harm than good. And he can't even go back to his loved ones. Now there is one episode, I forget what. He meets Shalaba. I think it's like a, a, a shapeshifter or something like that. It's not the real one, I can't really remember. 
Um, and, you know, at one point he's just like all in love and so happy and somehow he turns back human. Until he finds out it is like a ruse. And I, th I think it was the Creed that did that to him, I think. And he finds out it's like a ruse and then he, she's not really there and he's not really human. And then he finds his board and he goes back into the galaxy looking for the real Shalaba. Then when it gets to the finale, we see something strange is going on. I think time keeps repeating itself or something like that. And it turns out Galactus is sick and dying because Nova has to go find the surface. She don't understand what's killing him, but he is dying. Turns out it's Thanos. This is the first time I ever saw Thanos. I don't like his voice in this, but it's the first time I, uh, they made him into the whole he loves death type thing. And he really has it out for Galactus. And so like Lady Chaos is their version of death. That's what they call her. They can't call her death. And she's a stone statue. I don't know why she's a stone statue. Maybe she's just playing around with Thanos and toy with him. Or maybe somebody did that to her. But either way, Thanos is looking to destroy the universe, but not with the Infinity Stones. And he does it by using the power of Galactus. So it's this big thing where they have to like stop him. And then boom, it ends on a cliffhanger. And we never know what's going to happen after that because the show got canceled. This is a very different and very unique series. It's unlike anything you will ever watch. It's not like the Fantastic Four. It's not like X-Men. It's not like Spider-Man. It's very different. When people say this is Shakespeare in uh, space, they mean it, you know? Everything about this series just has a different vibe to it from the intro. The intro is amazing, by the way. The graphics, the way people speak, the music. Like, you really are taken off Earth and you are in this, like, galaxy far, far away type place, you know? It's the same feeling you get when you watch, like, the older Star Wars and the Star Trek. It's that otherworldly vibe. And, you know, I really encourage people to check this out. Now, it is on Disney+. Plus. It used to be on um, YouTube. I don't know if it still is or not. But check this series out. Alrighty. Well, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.